everyone, thank you so much for being here. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm gonna to be testing out some brand new drugstore and affordable makeup. I have a new palette from Alter Ego and some products from Catrice and Wet n Wild. So if that sounds good, let's just jump right into it. And if you haven't subscribed and you end up enjoying this video, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button as well. So to start out, I'm just gonna put a lip balm on and this is new from Catrice. It's their Lip Lovin' Overnight Lip Mask. I think this comes in two different varieties. I ended up getting the cherry one. And I'm wondering if this is kind of their take on the Laneige lip mask. I feel like almost every drugstore brand has done a lip mask at this point. But to be honest, I'm not even the biggest fan of the Laneige one anyway. I don't know why it has the hype that it does. That could be just my hot take. I don't know if you agree. But um, anyway, this one comes in kind of like a cherryish color. And the scent is giving cherry cough drop. And that is really fresh in my mind right now because I just got over being sick and I'm literally still coughing a little bit at times and I've been eating those Halls cough drops. This smells pretty much identical to that. So not my favorite cherry scent to be honest. It has that little bit of a medicinal quality. Let's see if the formula makes up for it. It actually feels very glossy, very slippery. Um, it doesn't seem to have that much color, but it is adding a little hint of tint to my lips, which is nice. It's not the thickest lip balm in the world. It's a little bit on the thinner side, but it does feel very smooth. And like I said, it has a lot of gloss to it, which I find kind of strange for an overnight lip mask because it's something, if you're gonna be sleeping with this on, you don't necessarily want something super goopy and glossy that's gonna get all over your pillow. Not to mention it also has a little bit of color to it. I know that the like Laneige lip mask is pink in color, but when you put it on, it goes on clear. This one definitely added a little bit of color to my lips. Not too much, but it's just something to consider. And it's also not very thick for a lip mask. So I almost feel like I would wear this more during the day than overnight. It does feel really nice. Don't get me wrong. It's just that the glossiness and the color and how thin it is doesn't say overnight lip mask to me, but it seems like a nice lip balm either way. So I'll just leave it on my lips for now. Moving on to eyes, I have the new Mist Haven palette from Alter Ego. And as you know, Alter Ego is famous for their dupes. So this is a dupe for the Pretty Grunge palette from Huda Beauty. And I'm really excited for this actually. And I think I prefer the packaging of the Alter Ego to the Huda Beauty. And the reason for that is because they've kind of released this as a spooky season palette. And it has that sort of haunted forest vibe on the packaging, which I think is so cool. I really love the way they did this, especially because the colors inside are that darker, smokier, grungy vibe. So I think they, looks wise, did a really nice job with this palette. Looking at it close up, look at how they kind of lined up the colors. I feel like they just organized their palettes in such an easy, more user-friendly way where other brands like the Huda Beauty one, it's just kind of like all over the place. So the layouts obviously are a little bit different. I think the Huda Beauty one is just a little bit more scattered with the colors and this one just looks a little bit more organized. But I wanna quickly just cut to some comparison swatches so we can see them side by side. I think Alter Ego always does the most amazing job at really duplicating not only the colors, but the textures and finishes in each specific palette. Like if it's a glittery shadow, they really try to make the same type of glitter. Like if the original has a more fine glitter, the Alter Ego one isn't gonna be chunky. It's gonna be really similar. So as always, I think they did a great job with that. And I did have to split them up into matte shades and then shimmer shades because these are larger palettes and they don't all fit on my arm. So I thought this could be helpful too. I like to kind of see the breakdown of the matte shades versus the shimmers because it helps me to see a little bit better what I'm working with rather than seeing them all together. So I want to do a look um, one eye with the Huda Beauty palette, the other eye with the Alter Ego, and we'll do a comparison. So I'm just going to quickly prep my eyes with the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. And I'm just going to let this set down for a minute. I actually just got a text that my Instacart order is here. So I'm going to go down and grab that and I will be right back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on the Alter Ego side first. I'm gonna pick up the shade Plum, which is this light pale lavender right here. And I'm using the Angie Hot and Flashy A503 brush from BK Beauty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start working this into my crease. Wow, just like the Huda palette, 
This is a lot darker than it looked in the pan. And I had the same reaction when I used the Pretty Grunge palette for the first time. I thought it was gonna be this really super light pale lavender and it ended up going on much deeper than that. So it's kind of crazy that they even got that aspect of it right. All right, then going into the Huda palette, I'm gonna pick up the shade Beauty Chaos, which is basically the same shade. And I'm gonna apply this one over here. Yeah, you see how it's like almost a color changing type of formula. It looks so much darker than it does in the pan. It's weird, but I just love this color. It's the shade that I almost always start with when I use the Pretty Grunge palette because it just has that beautiful, cool undertone and you don't find that very often in eyeshadow palettes. I feel like most transition and crease colors have a little more warmth to them. So I love that this palette has this shade in it. It does also have some warmer crease colors if you wanna use those as well. I just feel like you get a nice balance of both the warm shades and the cool shades in these palettes. So next up, I wanna deepen up the outer corner. I'm gonna use this shade Merc down here. I feel like you could totally just go down this row if you want that plummy base because these all have a little bit of purple behind them, but I'm gonna skip over this mid-tone one. I just don't feel like I need it. So I'm just gonna go straight for the darker one for the outer corner. And I'm picking this up on the Refer number one mini, which is more of a flat brush. So I like to just pack that right in the outer corner and then just start blending it back toward the middle. This shade is also very pigmented. No issues whatsoever. I'm not getting any fallout. The shadows aren't super powdery. I actually thought that the Huda crease color on this side was a little bit more powdery. There was kick up when I picked it up in the pan and there really wasn't with the Alter Ego one. All right, so once I have that down, then I just take a slightly fluffier brush. This is the Refer 15 Mini and I just kind of work that into the crease a little bit, just kind of blend it with the crease color. The flat brush is great for laying down shadow, but then I just like to kind of get a better blend on it with something like this. And this brush is small, so it fits right into your crease. You don't have to worry about like a big fluffy brush. It's not gonna take the shadow too high. <clears throat> All right, so then in the Huda palette, I'm gonna use the shade Fearless, which is over here. And I'm just gonna start packing this right in the outer corner with the same brush. By the way, I did clean off my brush with the Sigma Switch. I figured it's better that way so we don't contaminate the shadows and it just makes the comparison a little bit more fair that way. So this shade, I feel like it's actually going on a little bit patchy. I don't know about you guys, but I felt like this side got a much better blend over here. I mean, I know I haven't fully blended it yet, but just packing it on, it's kind of grabbing weird. So I'm just gonna take that number 15 mini, I'm just gonna clean it off on the Sigma switch and then go back in and try to blend this out a little more. All right, yeah, it is looking a lot better, but I don't know, I'm just having a hard time blending this out for some reason. It doesn't wanna move. All right, I think I got it blended as much as I possibly can, but uh, Huda Beauty side, alter ego side. I just feel like this looks a little bit smoother over here. All right, next I wanna go silver on my lids. I definitely wanna use glitter primer. Um, this is the one from NYX because the shade that I wanna use in the Huda palette does have a little bit of fallout. I'm not sure about alter ego, but I don't wanna take any chances. So I'm gonna grab the shade Cluster. This one, unfortunately, is a topper, so it's not as pigmented, but it's totally fine. So I'm just gonna pat it on top of the glitter primer that I just put down. This is also a gorgeous shade. It gives kind of a beautiful, ethereal, shimmery look. Really, really nice. Okay, then on the Huda side, I'm gonna pick up the shade Maverick, which is down here. And this one seems like it's gonna be very similar. It's also a topper and it's like a silvery white. This one might even be a little bit whiter than the Alter Ego. It seems like it has maybe a slightly different undertone, but it's pretty close. All right, so here we have the two sides. I do think the Alter Ego side is maybe a little bit more glittery. This one's a little bit smoother maybe, but I do think it gives a similar effect, but the shades are definitely slightly different here. So it is what it is, but I just wanted to point that out really quick. Next up, Wet n Wild sent over their Nightmare Before Christmas collection and to be honest with you, I don't think I'm gonna use much from this collection today, only because it doesn't really wow me all that much. The box that they sent it in is really cool, but then when you actually look at the products themselves, which I'll show you, there's not a whole lot they did that makes these more special. I think everything is in their normal Wet n Wild packaging. It just has some Nightmare Before Christmas artwork on top of it. Like they didn't really go super 
super special with the packaging. But either way, I just wanted to quickly show it to you. So um, the palette, again, I'm not gonna open this. My sister likes Tim Burton, so I'm probably gonna gift her most of the products in here. But this is the palette and it's definitely pretty. And I know people love Wet n Wild's eyeshadow formula. It's not my favorite. And I just feel like I have so many palettes. I don't need this one on top of it. So I'm not gonna open this and swatch it, but this is what it looks like. They also have a blush trio. So this has two blushes and then one golden highlighter over here. To be honest, again, not my favorite when it comes to mixing highlighter in with blushes and just these stripes in general. I always find it hard to get the color that you want. I think this purple blush over here looks beautiful, but I don't. it's gonna be hard to isolate that when you're applying it because you're gonna get some of this one in it as well. So again, I do think they have a really nice formula, but this isn't my favorite packaging. Another product in the collection is this glitter gel. This is for the body. It doesn't say that you can use it on your face. At first I thought it was a glowy primer, but seeing as how it's just like a body glitter gel, it's not something that I'm really going to use. So I'm not going to open this either. This next product was kind of a WTF moment. So it's a contour and highlight stick. So there's a contour down here that looks like it's pretty cool toned in color, but the highlighter, there is literally nothing in it. Like they sent me just a completely empty tube and it's not like it fell out anywhere. It's not in the box. It's just not here. I'll show you what the contour looks like. I mean, again, I think the color looks nice, but I've actually seen some reviews of this and the highlighter is like chalk white. It has no um, shimmer to it. It's like a matte white, almost like paint. So to be honest with you, I'm not even mad that it's not here because I don't think it would have worked for me anyway. Um, there are also some glitter eyeliners. They're liquid liners. I believe one of them is green and one is kind of like a sparkly white. I've seen them in other videos. So again, not really anything that I'm going to use for myself. Next, we have three of their liquid lip and cheek product. And I actually really like this formula. I think it's nice. And these colors look pretty, but again, I'm just drowning in liquid blushes. I feel like I don't need them. And then they also have two lip oils. So one is green, one's purple. These are actually the pH adjusting formulas, which I'm not a fan of either. I feel like they all end up looking the same. So I am going to skip these as well. But there are two products in the box that I'm excited to try. The first one is a tubing mascara. So I find it kind of odd that Wet n Wild decides to launch a tubing mascara in a limited edition collection. So I don't know, maybe they're just trying to test this formula within this collection. And if it does well, they'll make it permanent. We'll have to see. But I really want to test this out because I love tubing formulas. Although I'm a little bit apprehensive because when I showed this collection in my Instagram stories, when I first got it, someone DM'd me and said that this tubing mascara is terrible. So I felt a little bit let down by that, but then I also had to kind of think, you know, mascara is personal. Sometimes what I like, other people aren't gonna like and vice versa. So I didn't take it too much to heart. I still wanna try it for myself. Um, but so far I do like the brush. I think it's a nice small size. It feels like not a super wet formula. As I'm building it, it's not getting clumpy or anything, but I also feel like it's not giving a ton of length and volume either. It's falling a little bit flat, I have to say. It's a little bit disappointing because Wet n Wild is so affordable and it would be really nice to have a super affordable tubing mascara. I mean, obviously I do love the e.l.f. one, so this is definitely not beating that one right now. But also I found that with some tubing formulas, I have to just use them a few times and kind of maybe let them sit for a few weeks and kind of dry out once I've used it a couple of times and then I end up liking it better. So down the road, maybe I'll give this one another shot and see if I like it better at that point. But right now it's a little underwhelming. Yeah, so it just gives a very natural looking length and volume. I don't feel like it added much of either to my lashes. So I'm kind of bummed about that. I was really excited for another tubing formula, but Anyway, let's move on to the other product in the Wet n Wild collection I wanted to try, and this is their Sticky Serum Primer. So this is probably their answer to like Milk Makeup's Gripping Primer, the e.l.f. one, like everybody's doing these grippy primers now. It says that it has 5% niacinamide in the formula. So I figured I'll just do this on one half of my face and I'll leave the other half alone and we'll see if there's a difference. So texture wise, this comes out like a thick jelly. I do think it's cute how it's kind of like green slime. It kind of goes along with the Halloween theme, which is nice. Um, and it is a very thick 
texture as I'm putting this on my face. Very, very similar to the e.l.f. one and the Milk Makeup. It might even be a little bit thicker and maybe slightly stickier too. Yeah, like as I'm applying this, it almost feels like glue. This is extra, extra sticky. Hopefully that means it'll work really well. It doesn't have any kind of a scent to it, which is great. Next, I don't have a new foundation, so I'm just gonna use the e.l.f. Soft Glam Satin Foundation. And I have this in the shade Light Neutral. I actually ordered, like when this first came out, I'm positive I ordered Light Cool and I ended up getting light neutral in the mail. So I don't know if I clicked the wrong button or if they sent me the wrong one, but I still have to go out to Target or Walmart or somewhere and get the light cool because I think this one is just a little bit too peachy for my skin tone. It's really not the right color, so I want to see if the cooler one is a little bit better. So far, I do think it's going on top of the primer really nicely. I'll have to take a look once I'm done and see if I can see a difference, but even if not, I think the whole point is just that the primer helps it to last longer on your skin. Although I do have to say, just looking at my cheek, this side looks smoother. I don't know if the primer kind of like plumped up my pores a little bit. It doesn't say that it's pore smoothing, but for some reason I like the way my skin looks over here just a little bit more than over there. I almost feel like it has better coverage on this side as well. So that's pretty interesting. And again, I'm kind of curious as to why they launched not only the tubing mascara, but a jelly primer or a grippy primer in a limited edition collection. But like I said, when I was talking about the mascara, it could just be that they're trying to like test these products out, see how well they do, and then maybe re-release them just in their normal packaging. So I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. Next for blush, I'm so excited for these. Catrice has some new blush duos. So these are called Blush Affair Cream and Powder Palette. So there are four different options. We have one that's like more of a warm tone pink. There's this gorgeous, almost like warm terracotta color story. We have a cool toned pink option and then one that's a little bit more peachy. So these are so beautiful. I just wanna quickly show you close-ups and swatches so you can see what they really look like. I have really been impressed with Catrice's cream formulas. They did a palette recently that looks similar to the Makeup Forever cream blush and highlighter palette, and I really loved the Catrice one. So I'm super excited to see how these perform, and I love that they're a cream and powder duo because I often will put on a cream blush and then top it with a similar color in a powder. It really locks it in place and keeps it from fading. It just looks good all day. So this just takes the guesswork out of that. I feel like you have your powder and your cream right in the same compact. So today I'm gonna use Pleasing Pink since I have a cool toned eye going on, this is the coolest option that they have. The cream actually feels like a really nice silky cream to powder kind of formula. Wow, it's pigmented too. So I'm just putting a little on with my finger and then I'll go ahead and blend it with a brush. Yeah, this is so similar to that same formula that they had in their blush and highlight and contour palette. I really like it a lot. It just seems so easy to work with. It just melts right in with hardly any blending at all. I feel like it's very user-friendly. By the way, this brush is the Sigma F11 Soft Sculpt. All right, yeah, so here's the cream blush. Look at how natural this looks. It just melts right into my skin. It's so easy to blend. And you could easily just leave it here, build it up, or add the powder, which I think I'm gonna do. I think the powder will really just lock everything in place. So I'm just gonna pick this up with the BK Beauty 107 brush and just start blending that right on top of the cream. Oh my gosh, that is, it's really pigmented. But I do like that the cream blushes dry down because you can put the powder right on top. It's reminding me a little bit of something like the Patrick Ta blush duos. I know with his, he says to put the cream on top of the powder, which is backwards from what I usually do, but I suppose you can do either one. I just find that you can really lock in the cream with the powder on top and it helps it to stay in place all day. Like your blush is not gonna go anywhere. I also really like this color, but honestly, I wanna try all of these. I think they look so gorgeous. All right, so there's the blush. Next, I also have some more Catrice lip products that I wanted to share. These are the Care and Colors Lip Balms. I'm pretty sure there are actually some more colors. I just ended up getting these three, but there are definitely other options out there as well. These are supposed to be just really silky, 
tinted lip balms. So I figured I'll just try them all on and we can see what they look like and do some lip swatches. So let's start with the first shade. I think this says half baked cookies. I don't know, the print is so small. I'm having trouble seeing it, but it's a really pretty nude brown shade. Mm, this is so silky. It feels really, really smooth on my lips. Not a huge fan of the scent. It kind of smells like crayons mixed with vanilla. So I don't really love that, but it's not super strong or overpowering. What I do really love is how smooth this is making my lips look and feel. So um, this one again is half-baked cookies. All right, the next one is feeling pretty. So this one is kind of like a peachy nude. This is actually a beautiful color too. I just feel like it doesn't really go with my look, but if I had warmer tones on, I think this would be gorgeous. All right, the last one is Wild Rebel. This one looks really dark in the tube, but I'm hoping it's not gonna be that dark. We'll see. It is a tinted lip balm, so hopefully not. Oh wow, this is gorgeous. All right, this is like the most beautiful wine color, but it goes on sheer, so it's not gonna be overpowering. I love this one, this is so beautiful. All right guys, here is the finished look. And honestly, I'm really excited about almost everything in today's video. I would say the thing that I liked the least was probably the tubing mascara from Wet n Wild. But again, I'll have to just keep playing with it and see if it gets any better. Again, I think Alter Ego is always a solid choice when it comes to their palettes. And this particular color story is honestly just perfect for this time of year. So if you like those really smoky, deep, grungy neutrals, I think you'll really enjoy Enjoy the Mist Haven palette and I also have a code to save 10% on that. It's Gen 10, so I'll just leave that here and down below as well. And really when it comes to standouts in today's video too, I loved the Catrice Blush Affair. Gorgeous. I love how it applied. These colors that they come in are fantastic. So I can't wait to play with the rest of them. And these lip balms too are just so silky and smooth. I love how they feel on my lips. I can't even really smell the weird crayon smell anymore. So like I said, it's not that over powering and I don't think it'll annoy most people unless you're sensitive to fragrance then I wouldn't get those and even the wet n wild sticky primer the more I look at my face and everything is kind of setting down the more I feel like this side that I put the primer on looks smoother than this side this one looks a lot more textured which is super weird because it's not even supposed to be a pore smoothing primer but for some reason my makeup i think is just laying really smoothly over here maybe that's the difference i don't know but either way I like it. Of course, it goes without saying that all of this is a first impression, but obviously I've tried all of Alter Ego palettes since the beginning and I know that they wear really well and the quality is there. Also, I feel like I already have some experience with the Catrice blush because the cream formula seems really similar to that other palette that I have already and I really enjoy that. So anyway, guys, what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them down in the comment section. And as always, thank you so much for taking taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I really appreciate it. And if you do have some extra time and you'd like to watch another video, I'll put some recent ones right over here that you could check out next. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next one. Take care. Bye.